mantle because it came on him many years before. He took that mantle, went to that same river Jordan and said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? Elijah? And then the sea parted. And the other people can tell the power, the spirit of Elijah has come upon Elisha and he came to bend down. But it took a journey. It took some milestones. It took some consecration. It took some absolute surrender before that thing came upon him. Anointing is not cheap. Having the power of God is not cheap. And being used of God in this day, in this generation, is not cheap. And it is not something worth fight for. Sometimes the, you know, the um, journalists, they come to, you know, they interview me and they talk to me. And, you know, because we, we interact with them, we're, they're doing good and want to affirm the goodness that they have. But they sometimes ask me a question. They say, well, you are going older. I say, oh, you know, I'm going older. They say, they look at, you know, your hair. I said, is that a sign of looking old? Because somebody can be 35 and have this kind of hair. Have you seen that? Look at that man over there. He has this kind of hair. It's not up to fourth. Look at that one over there. And these are ladies who are covering their head. You know, you don't see some of them are 29 and they have this kind of hair. This one doesn't show old age. What shows old age is inside here. When your heart is young. When your heart is on fire. When you say, give me this mountain. Whatever your chronological age. You're still young. I'm young at heart. I want to be on the front line, on the firing line. And you can tell, you can tell. All that vision I still remember, it was like yesterday. And that consecration, I, today I can still give up anything. I can still consecrate anything. I mean, when, a man, when a man can still give up anything, can judge anything, can abandon anything, can say, this is where I stand, I can still fight in the battle of the Lord at my age. That means I'm still young. In Jesus' name, I'm young. You know, many years we're still together here. And you younger people, come and dare it and run. And let us run a race together. And you other people, whoever will blow the vessel, let somebody blow the vessel for us and say, on your mark, search, go. And come and see these younger people. They'll be breathing like this one. I'm already over there. Praise the Lord. What I am saying is that if you are still young at heart, you want to give everything you've got to the Lord and still consecrate your life and still say, if God can help this man I'm seeing over there on the stage, God can help me and God will help you in Jesus' name. I want you to be exactly like me. Paul the Apostle said, be like me, follow me because I follow Christ. And I can tell you, follow me because I follow Christ. Don't try to change me to be like you. Allow me to change you to be like me. Because if you change me to be like you, it will be a tragedy for this country, Nigeria. Think about that. You change me to be like you. He changes me to be like him. And she changes me to be like her. It will be a tragedy for this country. But if you allow me to stay where I am staying, don't bring me back from the mountaintop. Allow me to stay there. And then you say, I don't want to change that man. But I want him. I want the power. I want the authority. I want the anointing right? to change me. That's the kind of change that is going to be beneficial for this country and for this continent. And it will happen in Jesus' name. Number one is the conversion. Number two is the consecration. Number three is the continuation. I will continue. I said I will continue. I said I will continue. The power, the spirit to continue. The Lord will give you in Jesus' name. Continuation and abiding satisfaction with a teaching church. A teaching church. I want to show you that the church of the New Testament was a teaching church. It's not a church of motivation. A change of just uh, you know glossing over things, a, ch a church of petting people, patting them at the back, a church that gave itself to teaching. I'm starting from Acts of the Apostles, chapter one. Acts chapter one, I'm reading from verse one. Acts chapter one, we're looking at verse one. It says, The former treaties have I made of your fellows of all that Jesus had begun both to do and to teach, both to do and to teach a teaching church. I'm looking at uh, chapter 4, verse 2. In chapter 4, verse 2, being grieved that they touch the people. They touch the people. They touch the people. A teaching church. Look at verse 18. In verse 18, it says, And they called them and commanded them that they should, they should not speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. It was a teaching church. We're looking at chapter 5 and verse 21. Chapter 5, verse 21. And when they had that, they entered into the temple early in the morning. 
money and they touch, they touch, they touch. In almost every chapter, it tells you that that church, that early church was a teaching church and this church will remain a teaching church in Jesus' name. It tells us in chapter, in chapter 5, chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 42. Chapter 5, verse 42. Here is what it says. They were doing, it says daily in the temple and in every house, they cease not to teach. They didn't stop teaching. And when you have a church, that's the true church. That's how we have the marks and characteristics of a really true church because of the teaching. I'm looking at chapter 11, verse 26. Chapter 11, verse 26. And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the people and taught much people and taught much people. And so the church is going to be strong today. It is that teaching, it is that teaching that will make the church strong. Acts of the Apostles chapter 14. Acts chapter 14, we're looking at verse 21. Chapter 14 verse 21, it says continuing, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in, in the faith and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. It tells us in the last chapter, the last verse, the last chapter of the Acts of the Apostles, that's chapter 28, chapter 28 and verse 31. Here is what he's saying about what Paul continued to do until the very end of his life, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching preaching the kingdom of God and teaching. Teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence and no man doing what? No man forbidding him till the end of his life. He kept on teaching, kept on teaching because what to make the church strong, what to make the church steadfast is that we keep on teaching that word of God and we thank God so far so good. I said so far so good that since we started 1973 until this time, nobody has muscled our mouth, nobody has tied our mouth, nobody has put padlock in our mouth that we cannot teach. We keep on teaching, we keep on teaching, and what the Lord has done from that time until this time. We have not, nobody has been able to succeed. Maybe they have tried, but they have not succeeded in saying, tone down that one, don't talk about that one, don't mention that one, don't mention that one, don't teach that one. By the grace of God, so far so good that from the very beginning until this time, we have been teaching everything, every judge and every teacher. Everything the Lord has given us, we'll be teaching it until this time. And between this time and the end of time, we'll keep on teaching. We'll keep on standing up on that word of God. And if you're one of those people there, you are here and God sent you here to help me. God sent you here to hold up my hand like Aaron and all they held up the hand of Moses. You're not here to pull down my hands. You're not there to weaken me. You're not here to destroy me. You're not here to, you know, pull me away from the very center of the battlefield the Lord has called me to. You are here to lift up my hand. You are here to join along. And you are here to say, we're part of the vision. We're part of the calling. And we're going to keep on teaching whatsoever the Lord Jesus Christ has taught us. Can I ask you to stand up with me and stand up along with me that you say that you are going to keep on teaching. You'll keep on encouraging. You'll keep on helping. And you'll keep on emphasizing the same thing. It might demand something from you. It might demand something from your life. It might make you to say, oh Lord, I abandon that. I jettison that. I reject that. I, I give that away. I give up everything that will hinder, hinder me from being a partner to this man. I'm being a helper to this man. I'm being a comfort. I'm being a, a kind of companion to this man. You want to stand on your feet and you want to be able to stay. I want to stand upon this word of God. I want to stand upon this truth of the eternal God. And you want to say, oh Lord, here am I. I need everything upon the altar again. Show me the same vision you showed this man. And give me the same heart and the same passion you gave to this man. And give me the same earnestness. Earnestly contending for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints that this church, this church will be a true Christian church for the rest of our lives. Your children will follow on. Your daughters will follow on. Your sons will follow on. Your wives will follow on. They follow in the public. They follow in the private. Not people who are here with us in the public and they do like us and they dress like us and they talk like us and they pray like us but then when they get to the secret there's something else happening there. They appear to be uncompromising in the public but they're compromising in the secret 
Spirit. You want to say with all my heart, with all my soul, I'm going to stand upon the word of God. And those who are not friends of sound doctrine, and those who are not sympathetic to sound doctrine, they'll not be my friend. They'll not be my. They'll not be my close partners. Only the people. Only the people that are standing on this eternal word, eternal word of God. The people that will not change. I swear to my heart, I change not. And the people that are going to say, I've opened my mouth and I've spoken to the Lord and I'm not going to retract. I'm not going to reverse. I'm not going to take back from what the Lord had given me. You want to give your heart, your life, everything you've got. You want to lay everything upon the altar. And you want to say, I want to be a part of the church. I want to be a part of the church. That to be the true Christian church, having the same, the same kind of life. We're saved. We're separated from the world. We're sanctified. We're spirit-filled. We're spiritual. We're not carnal. And we keep on in the unity of the faith with the people of God. All that I need to do. All that I need to surrender. Oh Lord, I give that. I give everything. I give my heart. I give my life. I give my home. My wife will support. My husband will support. My children will support. My friends will support. Anyone that will not support this church and what the Lord has given us, we're going to just pack them aside and go on and move on because we have gone too far to change now. We've gone too far to modify the word of God. We've gone too far to change the word of God. Let the word of God change you. Let the word of God transform you. Let it make you a part of this transformed church, a part of the true church, a part of the rapturable church, a part of the translatable church that the Lord himself in his power and the Lord himself in his glory will do something in your heart, will circumcise your heart again, will do that surgical operation in your heart that you'll say, oh Lord, I'm not holding anything back, I'm not holding anything back, I give everything I've got, I'm going to stand, I'm going to stand on this word of God, I'll support the word, I'll support the doctrine, I'll support the life, I'll support everything we're doing, not that we're wrecking and we're ruining and we're destroying and then we're pulling back, not that we're trying to weaken the man and weaken the hand of the man that is holding up the standard we're going to hold up the standard with him. We're going to be an encouragement. We're going to be a great support. Like Aaron and all, we're going to be a real support. And as Naomi is going back to where she came from, Ruth is saying, I'm going to go with you. I don't allow you to go alone. I will support you. I'll be a partner to you. Where you die, I will die. Where you live, I will live. Your God will be my God. Your people will be my people. God, you so unto me. And more than that, if aught but any but death, but you and I, you want to give all your life, all your soul, everything you've got. You want to lay everything on the altar. You want to say, I want to be part of that vision. I want to be part of that progress. Progress in righteousness. Progress in holiness. Progress in sanctification. With all my heart, with all my soul, I want to surrender all that I've got. And I give all I have. I give everything unto you. Oh Lord, that experience of sanctification, that experience of holiness, I'm going to maintain it. All my heart, all my soul, with all the members of my family, everything I've got. That little thing I can give that up. That little thing I can give that up. That little thing I can give that up. I give everything I've got. I'm going to stand on this word of the Almighty God. Give your heart and give your life and say, Oh Lord, here am I. Oh Lord, here am I. And then your will is swallowed up in the will of God. Your passion, everything you've got, anything of the past that will hinder this vision, anything of the past in your life, may be dear to you. You do like Paul the Apostle and say the things that were gain to me, those I counted lost for the Lord Jesus Christ and for the excellency of his grace and calling upon my life. The Lord is asking you that you'll give everything it takes, everything it takes and say, Lord, Lord, here I stand. I'm standing upon the rock of ages. Whatever wind may be blowing and whatever stream may beat upon the house. I am going to stand. I am going to stand. That's how the Lord, that's what the Lord will honor. That's what the Lord will honor. And the Lord is calling you and he's saying, why don't you do it? Why don't you do it? Why don't you do it? Others have done it. Paul did it. Moses did it and he laid everything down. Even Abraham did it and he laid his only begotten son. He laid him down. Jephthah did it and he laid everything down. And the people of God in past generations, they have laid everything down. It's now your turn. It's now your turn. And the Lord is looking for people, the people they can use to broaden the vision. 
the people you can use to establish the vision and the people you can use in this generation to be able to go and preach this word of transformation and this word of life and this word of power is looking for people for men and women let him find you let him find you that you say oh lord here am i i'm that man i'm going to give everything i've got i'm going to lay everything down i'm going to serve you with all my heart all my soul all my mind with a circumcised heart with a submissive heart and with surrendered heart absolute surrender i recognize the absolute ownership divine ownership of the almighty god that's what god is saying god is saying to you today why don't you surrender everything your heart your life your possession everything your future so, so, surrender into the hands of the living god and don't be arguing with the lord i can't do this i can't do that i can't surrender that i can't give up that but you say oh lord what is it what is it jesus christ he died for me he shared his blood for me he gave up everything so that he can redeem me from all iniquity and then he can bring me to a friend a man a woman that is zealous of good work I want to experience that. I want to experience that. I want to experience that. I want to be that man today. I want to be that woman today. Let the Lord do it in your life. Let the Lord do it in your life. Let the Lord do it in your life. And lay everything down completely with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, everything you've got saying, Oh Lord, I give up everything. I give up everything. Circumcise my heart again. Sanctify me again. Purify me again. Take every impurity and take every desire that is not according to your will. Take it away from me and let me stand and let me stand on this word so that there will be no change even a little thing a little thing oh lord i give it up if it's little why don't you give you give it up some people is a minor all right if it's minor why don't you give it up some people after all that's a little thing why don't you give it up if it's so hard to give up then it's not a little thing any kind of friendship that will hinder you in their sanctification experience you give it up any kind of relationship that will hinder you in this forward march in what God is calling you to do you give it up anything at all your personal life your family anything at all your place of work that is going to hinder the great commitment the Lord is asking from you that will be a true church that will be a Christian church, that will be a New Testament church, that will be a church that is going to be rapturable. Anything that will hinder that, you want to say, oh Lord, I lay it once again at the altar, at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're talking whether it is money or material things, or whether it is your pride or your knowledge or whatever it is, your tradition or it is your background. You want to lay everything down to say, oh Lord, here is where I stand. Here is where I stand. And Lord, and when you stand by your word, you stand by that word. You don't allow anything, whatever, to be able to set you back. You say, that's what I've said. I've opened my mouth to the Lord. I cannot go back. I will not go back. The Lord is asking you today that you will be a man like that. To be a woman like that. You say, oh Lord, here am I. Oh Lord, here am I. Oh Lord, here am I. I lay everything down. Conversion. There must be genuine conversion. It saves from sin. It says from sin, and there's no sin, no pet sin, you're still hiding there, there's no pet sin, you're still embracing there, there's no pet sin, you still love more than you love heaven, more than you love Jesus Christ. You say, whatever it is, if it's my right hand, I cut it off. It's, if it's my right hand, I pluck it out, so that I'll be able to keep in that holiness and righteousness, without which no man shall see the Lord. You give it up so that you'll be able to win the great crown, the crown of life, the crown of righteousness, and the crown of glory that has gone to prepare for his son you tell the lord oh lord today i consecrate my life on you i set myself apart on you i give up everything sacrifice everything on you so that the glory of god the righteousness of the lord, the holiness of the lord will be reproduced in my life all over again let the lord do it let the lord do it and say oh lord i come oh lord i come oh lord i come I'm not going to withhold anything from you. All to Jesus, I surrender. Everything that you need to surrender. You lay everything upon the altar. All, all. Without reserving anything. You say, Lord, this is where I stand. So that, Lord, I'll be part of the vision. I'll be part of the vision of a cleansed church. Of a righteous church. Of a sanctified church. Of a separated church. Of his Bible. Of a Bible church. A New Testament church. I want to stand on this until the end of my life. And whatever it is I've been holding dear. Whatever it is I've been holding precious. Whatever it is I've been holding unto. Oh Lord, I give it up. And I just give my 